Hi, I'm Annette Lawless. I'm a news anchor and investigative reporter here at CAKE, and I share the stories of missing people every day. Missing in Kansas. Anything from runaways to our cold cases, we know that we are making a difference. In fact, it's made a national impact, anywhere from celebrities to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, saying that they're seeing the results. Even Wichita police telling me that they're seeing a difference too, with cases getting solved, things that they probably wouldn't have solved otherwise. And what's really great is the community support. It's been incredible. For example, some stories have had more than 400,000 shares on Facebook alone, and it's making a lasting impact. We just appreciate everyone so much for their consideration, and of course, your consideration for the support of this series. We can't wait to see where it's going to go to. A lot of big projects on deck. You can see more of our exclusive Missing in Kansas series at cake.com slash missing. A Northeast Kansas mom will soon host a rally at the state capitol to draw attention to her son's disappearance decades ago. With lawmakers returning back to work, Alberta Leach is working to draw as much attention to her son Randy's case. Next Thursday, she hopes to share a petition to Governor Laura Kelly, and that petition has the support of more than 12,000 signatures online. A petition asking for a full and complete investigation into this case, something many argue never happened. Randy Wayne Lynch was last seen at a graduation party at a friend's house on April 15, 1988 in Linwood, Kansas. He may have left that party around 630 that night, driving his mom's 1985 gray Dodge 600 car with Kansas license plate LVJ8721. Then at 17 years old, he was described as being 6 foot 3, 220 pounds with brown hair and blue eyes and he has a mole on his left ear. Now take a look at this. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children just released this age progress photo of what Randy may look like now in his early 50s. His family believes someone knows something. Randy's dad passed away just last year, so his mom continues to fight in this case. They fought to get records released with everything, and people have helped them search different areas, including ponds, to find Randy's body, but nothing has turned up. Rewards are being offered for a tip on Randy's disappearance and suspected death, including one worth $25,000. If you have information that can help find Randy, you are asked to contact the Kansas Bureau of Investigation at 800-KS-CRIME. Reporting in the studio and at Lawless, Kick News on your side. Well, a big award tonight for our own Annette Lawless. The Wichita Business Journal named her one of the area's 40 under 40. It's the 25th annual anniversary class of 40 under 40 honorees who make up some of Wichita's top professionals. Tonight, each was presented with the award. Annette reports on missing people in Kansas for Cake News. She also volunteers for several local charities in our area. Congratulations to Annette. Today is National Missing Children's Day, and with Missing in Kansas, we're featuring the story of a teenager who is missing from down here in the south central part of the state. Take a look with me. This is Shay Twitchell. She is 15 years old and was last seen on May 9th in Newton. She is 5'6", 130 pounds with blonde hair and blue eyes. As we see here, she has a mole on her neck, and I'm told that she may still be in the area. So if you know anything that can help find her, give Newton Police a call at 316-283-4190. And a little background about this Missing Children's Day. It was created in honor of Aton Pates, and that's because today marks the disappearance of the six-year-old from New York City back in 1979. Decades later, a man had confessed to killing him, but his body was never found. And it's our hope that with Missing in Kansas, we can help make a difference by getting stories out quickly before that search does become desperate. Today, there are about 560 people reported missing in the state of Kansas, about 220 of them being youth. And here with Missing in Kansas, we've shared more than 1,300 cases since the start of our series about four years ago. You can see more of these stories up on cake.com slash missing. Something we prepare for, we, we, we try to prepare for everything, and certainly a child being abducted by a non-custodial parent is what happened in this case, or a child being abducted anyway is something we prepare for and, and work on to be ready for. So that's the chief of the Rose Hill School District's police department, Matt Neal, and he says this is the first time that a student has been abducted 
in his time as chief. He adds that his department, the school district and other partnering agencies are working to figure out just how that child's mother was able to check him out at the school after having her parental rights taken away. Our main concern every day is the safety of every student that we have here in the Rose Hill School District. And we are investigating exactly what happened and looking at everything as we do in, in every situation. You know, I've certainly seen a lot of questions, heard a lot from you all viewers about everything with the Amber Alert. And the biggest question certainly with it is why did it take so long? And certainly that's a question that we're asking investigators. What leads them into that timeline of pushing that information out? So we got a couple of alerts on our phones for people who live in this area. You may have seen one pop up, heard that alarm go off. But I want to break down at least for the very least for you a little bit more about how Amber Alerts take place. So they have a lot of criteria and that's important for example with our series Missing in Kansas. I, I feel like it's a big question. You know, we'll share a story of a runaway teenager. Why isn't this an Amber Alert is a lot, what a lot of people ask. So the specifications are, they break down like this. So there has to be an abduction that takes place and the abduction has to be either with a child. So someone 17 years old or younger and, or it could be a person with a disability, somebody who is mentally or physically disabled. We know that the victim also has to be in danger. That's important as a part of this criteria, as well as there has to be enough information to share with the public, to share with us all about the case. So we need to know information like a suspect, like, for example, with this case, we had a, the picture of the mom um, who had allegedly at that point taken her son out of the school and all this other information there. Also, the vehicle information. And we had a lot of information on Thursday at least three times. I know there were different vehicles that were shared as to what they could possibly be in and the tag information and all that. So those specific details are the important part of that criteria for Amber Alerts. And that's actually determined by the Department of Justice. So it's kind of guidance from the federal government as to what state agencies and nationally what we should do to send out these alerts. Certainly cases of missing people, children, etc. So important to share. And that's why we started Missing in Kansas. That's what inspired me to go and create that here at Cake. But the importance of Amber Alerts is just we want to make sure that we don't have Amber Alerts out all the time to desensitize everybody from um, how important different cases are. So certainly all cases are important, but certainly the severity and the information that we share also valuable there too. So I just want to make sure that that's clear in case you were wondering. Of course, stay with Cake News for continuing coverage of this case both on air and online up on cake.com. The work Cake has done with Missing in Kansas is bringing national awareness to a worldwide epidemic. But the change still starts here, in Kansas. If you know of a missing person story, submit it today on cake.com slash missing. Missing in Kansas, with reports every weekday, only on Cake.